Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Let's get right into the information today. We'll keep this short and sweet. So as we can see, according to recent news with our buddy Benoit over at the Bank of International Settlements at the Innovation Hub, we know his connections obviously from France. We know that he served on the board of directors for the European Central Bank. Um, again, just to kind of show you guys, I know you've seen this before, but for any newcomers, this gentleman's well connected. Um, we know, you know, working with the G20 sub working group on global liquidity management. We know, obviously, Ripple's held many consultant like roles that we know of. We can only speculate so far knowing that they have met with many of the top central banks bis imf you know pretty consistently hong kong hong kong monetary authority singapore etc all right so again with this recent announcement i did see that king solomon put out a good comprehensive video kind of covering this but again just to kind of speed through this so we can see right here today the bank of international settlements announces the expansion of the bank of international settlements innovation hub now understand that benoit has also liked xrp tweets um again i think he's just kind of all for any technology that's enabling and kind of pushing things forward so it doesn't have to be anything crazy meaning that you know he supports ripple and xrp 100 i think he supports the idea of innovation period to four new centers and a strategic partnership over the next two years we can see Right here will be established in Bank of Canada. Obviously, we've talked on this channel a lot. I believe that Canada is, you know, 80, 100% already connected to RippleNet based off of the major partners, All right? Bank of England, we already know they've trialed ILP and XRP. Miguel Vias has even talked about this. We have former gov governor of the Central Bank of England, Mark Carney, talking about this as well. Funny enough, when he actually took a stab at the US dollar, normally, President Trump and even both Steve Mnuchin would lash back to anybody and kind of, you know, shut them down. They didn't say anything, um, obviously, because I think that they, you know, kind of work together. All right. Also, uh, Rick's Bank, again, this is the Central Bank of Sweden. So as you can see here as well, keep in mind, remember just the connections alone. So with these guys, they are also working on the central bank digital currency, the eKrona. Guess who's helping implement that? Accenture. Who is Accenture? Well, they help with a lot of things. One example is digital transformation and embracing DLT, distributed ledger technology. They are also, fun fact, one of Ripple's first investors. Guess who else they help? R3 and even Swift. For an as an example, they've helped Swift with the integration of connecting their GPI messaging with part two the settlement system of Corda with R3. Interesting. All right, and again, just not connecting, just basic logic. And again, notice Bank of England based out of London. Well, who else has offices in London just out of memory? Well, we have Ripple and we also have R3. We know that there's also been a huge push of teaming up and kind of blending to work together for obviously financial inclusion, a level playing field, the same narrative between the private and public sectors. All right, we have Nordic central banks, we have, you know, the entire, you know, ECB, the Euro system connected. Interesting. All right. And even again, the Federal Reserve of New York. So we can kind of go through this again. I know you guys have seen this, just wanted to kind of talk about that and keep in mind, even when we mentioned when it was released in February, and everyone was sharing it around, and we went through the actual document of the central bank of France sharing interoperability and kind of testing and speculation with the XRP ledger and Ethereum in particular, using those protocols is actually a viable option to connect and potentially even build central bank digital currencies on top of. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I just want you to understand that central banks are acknowledging these assets and this asset class. All right. So let me let me see where I'm at just to kind of speed through this. Right. All right, right here. So a few things again, guys, this is actually the first deputy governor of the Bank of France. So just kind of pay attention to the talking points here. I'm not going to play the video. I just want to speed through this. So again, status sharing this as website status.hr. You can go check that out. Learn all about Ripple and XRP if you're a newcomer right here. There are many issues in the wholesale central bank digital currency space, but the most important ones are fragmentation, interoperability, scalability understand obviously you know all of these are an issue centralized blockchains can scale potentially faster but guess what not every single central bank wants to take the same route of connectivity there's obviously you know different types of corridors to an extent as well on the little remittance side but again we're just kind of focusing on wholesale central bank digital currency interoperability all right. In France last year, a new framework was set up to support the development of service providers of crypto assets. Reminds me of those VASPs, virtual asset service providers. So in terms of regulation, we need to amend, adapt the regulatory framework. 
right? Same narrative we're you know sick of hearing for the past few years, but at least 2020 has definitely been a year for the books, this push of going cashless and app actually finding out which groups have been experimenting and building on DLT for a few years now. We know that, you know, obviously even the US has admitted at least to the last two decades of working on going digital, at least for their currency, that should be no surprise. But in terms of actual DLT adoption and being on the same page with all these other nations, that's a whole nother monster. Right here, many central banks in the Bank of France started this process a few years ago with distributed ledger technology. We are proud to have been the first central bank to develop with the, within the French banking system. Now, something to notice. Remember, Bitcoin, you know, awesome innovation. The technology will absolutely be utilized in the future. I didn't say Bitcoin the asset, but I'm saying the technology, that first push of acknowledgement. And in particular for the, you know, obviously the payments industry for DLT, it's revolutionary period now will bitcoin survival will be a successful store of value will it you know help other assets i don't know i'm not going to be speculating on that i'm going to be focusing on xrp due to it actually solving real problems for real customers at the time and yes we are early days it's my belief if you guys even listen to the recent michael errington and anthony pompliano interview found that really really interesting super mature conversation they entertained both sides. They said good and bad about, you know, both Bitcoin and XRP. And I think that we have to have that healthy reminder as well. And yes, you can call this speculation. But again, even just mentioning the euro system alone, we have task group. We have these initiatives in faster payments and instant payment pushes with tips. We have Christine Lagarde talking about this. The chess piece is moving around. I think it's safe to assume, you know, obviously my bullish sentiment for the space, considering that we've been tested by some of the biggest central banks. And we're talking, I mean, anywhere from 30 to 50 of them. And... In terms of connectivity and trials, I don't think that they're doing this for fun. They're looking for real solutions because they have a real problem. This is archaic. It is time to replace this system. So if you were to ask me if any open source protocol were to solve this problem or even be used 1%, I would say XRP. Now, again, not financial advice, guys. We will see how this road continues. But you know my sentiment. All right. Next up. So right here, Arturo Portilla, again, former um, owner of the XRP Center account. Something interesting here, again, just kind of tying in groups in throughout Japan. So we have, and I'm going to butcher these names, but again, Sumishin SBI NetBank conducted a survey indicating that 70% of customers became accustomed to cashless payments during quarantine. Again, they are a MoneyTap enabled digital bank. We know MoneyTap. We know their rev, uh, relevance. Relevance, what am I saying? In digital bank jointly incorporated by SBI Holdings and Sumitomo Mitsui Trust Bank. And again, huge, huge banks in Japan. We already know Japan essentially is entirely connected. Crypto Addy's been doing a great job covering all the developments with SBI. I really do hope that they successfully launch. I do hope even per Adam Trademan, and they do begin util utilizing on-demand liquidity because obviously we had that promise probably two years ago now. Um, and obviously, you know, now we're, <laughs> our hearts were broken. So now we are simply waiting. And again, Crypto Eddie sharing this, getting through the SBI business presentation material that was just released, something new, establishing Japan's first crypto asset fund scheduled to start summer of 2020. Again, going in line with what we just shared with Adam Trainman. We know SBI's plans. And again, even Crypto Eddie has emphasized this. So Yoshitaka Katao, CEO of SBI, she said, I, I don't want to butcher it or exaggerate, but again, she I don't want to hyperbolize it, but she said something along the lines that she has a numerous amount of quotes of the CEO of SBI Holdings emphasizing their plans to utilize and utilize and push XRP utility. And yes, even domestically in Japan, within Japan, again, there are applications, whether it's 24 seven, 365, or even between different payment silos. We'll simply see, it's cool to see that XRP has obviously 50% of this type of fund in this hedge fund. We know many, many other groups are building cryptocurrency hedge funds. We know Grayscale, we know many groups, I mean, potentially even with 1% of the entire Bitcoin supply. That is, you know, absolutely insane when you come to think of it. And again, you see institutions are simply accumulating. Is this asset class one giant bubble or will this lead to a true push towards the Internet of value? All right. So we've gone through that, gone through that. Right here, I think we're going to finish up with this. So again, Matthew LINY, just something interesting. So we know Worldline is a Ripple partner, and they're actually working on a decentralized social media platform to rival Facebook and Instagram with the European Union to secure data and the development of value creating strategies. Um, personally, I'm you know super cynical about this. I, I wish them luck, but I, I don't really see this being successful. 
I hope five to ten years from now I eat my words and you know we see this type of group or platform successful or potentially even another rival I do think it's a good idea and ob obviously it's extremely important to have secure data and information again out of 15 partners including world-renowned universities and research centers who've been invited to take part in the development of Helios Worldline is the only representative of the payments and transactional services sector interesting keep in mind Ripple partner right and you can kind of see the countries I've already read through this earlier the project will be decentralized and monetized and blockchain will be involved all right we will simply see thought that was very, very interesting so thank you Matthew L-I-N-Y guys and again if you want direct updates guys follow Matt here on Twitter again I was never about Twitter but with XRP research I do personally recommend it just because there's nice threads pictures links etc all right and lastly, Wrath of Kahneman. So a little speculation here after naming some facts. I want to hear you guys' thoughts down below in the comments. So June and in Brazil specifically, obviously one of the BRICS nations. I mean, everything's going digital. Obviously, the BRICS nations are something to pay attention to because they are straying away from the SWIFT system. I think that we can all agree that these nations are finally done utilizing the U.S. dollar as that denominated currency. So guess what? How are those groups going to interoperate with the rest of the world? Are we all going to agree on some new system? who's going to have the vested interests again we will see so ripple met with the central bank about infrastructure in brazil rendimento was the first customer on ripple cloud we can talk about you know cloud obviously in the pushes you know aws we can talk about microsoft azure um just connections forever guys my mind just goes crazy with even uh you know jean carlo former cftc chairman again he's an advisor on ripple he's pushing for this digital dollar project and also accenture is one of the lead architects for this you know obviously project um pay id has been released whatsapp was denied operation recently even though we shared all that news with mastercard and visa as well which is interesting now here's his belief and he might be right whatsapp was denied because the brazilian payment partner cielo has near 50 percent of the credit transaction market with WhatsApp's reach, they would have command of Brazil's payment scene and it would be a monopoly. Watch for WhatsApp to onboard new Brazilian payment partners to break up the block going forward. This would be absolutely crazy. And again, he has his sources down below. So guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Just wanted to get a quick video for the first day of quarter three, 2020. Clock is ticking again. 2020 has been called the year of the digital asset. We will see if that's for a reason. Appreciate all of you that like this video, share it around, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.